welcome back to Energy Top Up, your weekly resilience boost to build your inner strength and your mental and emotional fitness. This week, we are looking at motivation. Now, it will be a little while still before we're out of lockdown completely, but now is a really good opportunity to start thinking about our future plans and our future goals, and that's what today's episode is all about. We are your hosts and your trainers. I'm Chartered Psychologist, Dr. Audrey Tang, and with me is the fabulous, award-winning parent and family coach, Sharon Lawton. Oh, hi everybody and thanks Audrey. So as Audrey said, this week is all about setting goals. So have you ever noticed that in life, some people avoid change. They, they prefer things to stay the same. They like the status quo. It helps them to feel safe. But other people love things to be different. They love change. Some people, as I say, are reluctant to change. But remember, nothing is permanent. Things are changing all of the time. And if we hold on to things staying the same and we're reluctant to change, well, we can inhibit ourselves from doing something totally amazing. So just like the seasons change and just like the weather changes, so do we. And becoming more comfortable with change is going to help us to grow in so many ways because change is good for us. When we step outside of our comfort zone, it can feel a little bit uncomfortable at first, but very soon it becomes a new normal. So in this week's show, we're going to be teaching you all about how to grow through change. We're going to be looking at setting goals and giving you tips on how to motivate yourself and how to achieve them. Isn't that right, Audrey? Absolutely right. A quick example of exactly what you're saying here is if you fold your arms the way that you're used to folding your arms, it feels comfortable fold them the other way and it is possible to do it just feels a little bit awkward but the more you practice it the more that can become natural too and that is what this week's show is all about so on to the warm-up we are going to start with thinking about motivation motivation depends on two things your preference for a cause of action within the choices that you have and the expectation that either it can be done or you can do it and it will bring results. If you can fulfill a good choice of action, a preference, and you know that it can be done and bring results, you are more likely to be motivated. But unfortunately, motivation has a number of barriers as well. So I'm going to start by busting some of those myths. And here they are. Please do not name these unicorns. Um, the first myth. I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I've lost a stone. I'll be happy when I get that job. I'll be happy when whatever that happens. No. When it comes to happiness, happiness is a state. It is not a goal. It is very possible to be happy at any time you choose. So don't rest on achieving that goal before you think you're going to be happy. You can be happy right now. When you achieve that goal, it's simply another trigger to be even happier. Myth number two, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It's okay. I'll do that for you and I'll still be fine. I'll do something else and I'll still be fine. No, that's not the case at all. You will not necessarily be fine because as strong as our will may be and as strong as we might believe in something, if we are so stressed that we have wound down our physical health to such an extent that we have no choice but to be put in the hands of doctors, hospitals, placing stress on the NHS as we physically recover from things like stomach ulcers and stress-related illnesses. So please take time to look after yourself. And third motivational myth. There's a rainbow highway to be found. There will be some fairy godmother that will come along and help me through it. I can't do it on my own. Wrong. You can do it on your own. Exactly as Glinda says in The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy, you had the power all along. So today we really want to think about how we can get ourselves motivated. And the exercise is dead simple. All you need to do is think about a time you have overcome barriers, whatever those were, and you have achieved something you really wanted, and write it down. Write it down thinking about all of those things you'd overcome. And as you do, you will notice certain phrases or certain words that keep recurring. It might be things like, 
I needed to prove it or it didn't matter. I worked hard because I really wanted to do it or I saw it as a challenge. Whatever those words were that you get passionate about, those are your motivations. So that's how you start finding your drive to keep going. And now I'm going to pass back over to Sharon for our first exercise. Oh, thanks so much, Audrey. That was amazing. I totally loved that. Okay, so what I want to share with you is a fantastic tool that will help you identify what you want and prioritise the outcomes that you need to begin that process to achieve it. Now, I use it with all of my clients um, and I want you to experience it as well. I want you to feel the impact that it has. Now, you're going to need a piece of paper um, and a pen for this exercise. So you might want to watch it through first or you might want to grab it now and, and do it with me. Now, this tool is called the Wheel of Success. And as I say, I use it with all of my clients. Now, the first thing that I want you to do is to identify your goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Do you want to use this time to think about changing your career? So you think, right, OK, I've been talking about it for, for a long time. Now I actually want to do it. Or is it about getting that work life balance better? or spending more quality time with your partner or with your children. Whatever it is, identify your goal and then I want you to write it down. I want you to write it down in, the, in a positive tense and in the, in the way that it's actually happened. So for example, I have the goal, the, the, the job that I want, or I have a good work-life balance and I'm seeing the children as much as I, as I want to. You know, what, whatever it might be, write it down as if you've achieved it and it's already happened. So that's the first thing that I need you to do. Now, the next thing is we're going to start to, to put together um, our wheel of success. So the first thing that you do after identifying your goal is to draw yourself a big circle. So draw yourself a big circle on the page. And then what I want you to do is to divide that circle up into eight segments. So draw spokes across so you have eight little segments within your wheel. And then after that, what I want you to do is to start to identify the priority areas that you need to concentrate on in order to achieve your goal. So, for example, if you are looking for another job and you want to achieve that new job, it might be um, get some interview techniques. It might be do some research um, um, around the companies that are offering that type of job. You know, so it'll be a whole range of things. It might be buy myself a new outfit for my interview. It might be practicing some techniques, whatever it might be. Identify yourself your eight priority areas and I want you to write each area in your segments of your wheel. Now, that's the first thing that I need you to do. Now, the next thing that I want you to do is to start to look at each of those segments and on a scale of one to 10, where 10 is I'm completely satisfied in that area and zero is uh -uh, I'm nowhere near, I want you to identify where you are in that particular priority area right now. So where are you right now on a scale of one to 10? Write that down for each of your priority areas. And I'm not expecting you to be at a 10 because if you were at a 10, you would have achieved your goal. So that's not the point. I want you to see where you are right now. And once you've identified every single segment of where you are in your wheel of success that's relating to your goal, then I want you just to join up the segments. And you might have a very sort of zigzaggy type of wheel. And that's okay. But what I want you to do is once you've done that is to step back have a look at it and just identify the impact that that's had on you already just by identifying your goal, looking at the eight priority areas and seeing where you are on your scale of satisfaction in each of those areas. What impact has that had and how do you feel about that? Now, this can be quite motivating to see sort of where, where you are. For some people, it can feel quite overwhelming. But I'm going to stop now and hand back to Audrey because in my second exercise, I'm going to help you to move on to the next level. So back to you, Audrey. 
Thank you, Sharon. So important to consider how it's, you've been impacted by the changes that you're making. Mm. And that's something I don't think we think about enough. We always just want, I want results, full results. So mm. we kind of go from, I want to lose weight to I'm, I've lost a stone completely as opposed to now I'm, my clothes are fitting better and I feel fitter. And Absolutely. So what you're saying is brilliant. It's so important. So I just want to pick up what Sharon's saying about having that big goal and the steps to success. And I know that Sharon will then talk about breaking down those steps. Um, and then later I'll talk about what you can do right now. So I'll carry on with this flip chart. But I just want to give you a little tip on that scale of one to ten. Whenever we use this as a scale, coaches are very alert to certain numbers. Now, 10, exactly as Sharon says, you're there already, you're doing it. Zero and one, we kind of think, well, oh, you may not be encouraged by us. You'll need to find some sort of motivation or inner drive to do it. But the numbers we look out for, seven in particular. Seven's an interesting one because you write down seven, you say seven, you think you're doing okay. If we ask you, how likely are you to do something and you say seven, you think that's high. If you do Sharon's exercise and you've got a seven on that scale, you think, no, I'm all right in that area. Seven is the coaching equivalent of, I'll try. Would you like to go to a party tonight? I'll try. It sounds good, but you may not be there. So my next question for you always would be, what will make that seven and eight? And back to Sharon. Oh, thanks so much, Audrey. That has definitely moved us into exactly what I wanted to speak about, because you're right. The numbers really do matter. So thinking back to that first exercise that we, we did together, you've got your wheel of success. You've also identified what your goal is um, and you've also got the numbers of where you are right now. Now, as Audrey said, we're now going to start to think about building on that and looking at those numbers in a little bit more detail. Now, what also can help here is once you've identified your wheel of success and you've got your different segments is to start to visualize that. So I'm going to come back to the visualization in, in a second. But the next thing I want you to do is to consider one of those segments well ultimately you will work around the whole of your wheel but for the sake of this exercise now i want you to choose one segment now it doesn't have to be the segment that scores the highest or the lowest just the one that you feel naturally drawn towards and we're going to concentrate just on that segment just for for this moment and then you can use this um this strategy to go around the rest of your your segments on your wheel of success now, choosing that a particular priority, I'd like you to think about three things that you could do. Now, that's a really important word, not what you will do. Three things that you could do that's going to take you one step closer. Because as Audrey said, sometimes we go from zero to 10 and we just think, oh, my goodness, how am I going to do it? I feel overwhelmed. So the best thing to do to achieve our goals is to start to break them down into manageable steps. So looking at your segment, I want you to think about what three things you could do that will move you one step closer to your 10 out of 10. So if you're a three, what's going to move you to a four? Yeah, if you're a five, what's going to move you to a six? If you're a seven, what's going to move you to an eight? So I'm just asking you to think about three things you could do that's going to take you that one step closer. So write down three things now. Now, when you've written down your three things, using those three things, and you may have come up with more than three, and if you have, that's great. Now, using those three things or more for inspiration, I want you to choose one thing that you will do in the next 24 to 48 hours that will make a positive impact on your overall goal. What is it that you can do in the next 24 to 48 hours that's going to move you that one step closer to your 10 out of 10 to make that positive impact on your goal? Now, I want you to write that down write down what it is and again reflect what impact has that had does it feel easier to achieve do you feel a little bit more able to to be able to to tackle that and the other thing that i want you to do 
is to write down what your 10 out of 10 would look like. So you've got your, um, you've got your wheel, you've, you've, you've identified the segments, you've identified the one thing that can take you one step closer, but let's now identify what 10 out of 10 would look like. So if you were completely satisfied in that area of your life, what would it look like? What would you be saying to yourself? How would you know it's a 10 out of 10? How would you feel? What would you be doing? Write that down, create a visual representation. Sometimes you can do that in like a vision board. So you create exactly what it would be like. Because if we can associate with that, if we can see it, we're much more likely to achieve it. So what would 10 out of 10 look like? How would it feel? What would you be saying to yourself? What would, be, what would have happened? So we've got our 10 out of 10. You've got your three action points. You've chosen one that is gonna take you one step closer towards your goal. Now I want you to put some deadlines and some dates around that. So the thing that you've chosen to do, when specifically are you going to take action? What day, what time? specifically write that down the next question is how will you remember life can be busy even in lockdown how will you remember that you're going to do and you've made a commitment to do this thing at this date and this time what might get in the way of you doing that thing and how will you deal with that so how will you cope with the fact that there might be an, an obstacle that gets in the way now, when you've identified all of those things and you've identified how you're going to remember and, and you've looked at what might get in the way and you've put yourself a specific date and time down, step back and have a think, right, what impact has that made? Now, often when we start to simplify things and we break things down, we feel more motivated. It feels much more achievable. And that's often what happens. People set themselves huge goals and then they don't set themselves manageable action points in order to get there. So connecting back to Audrey's question, how are you feeling now about your commitment? How committed are you now in taking this action on a scale of one to 10? And if you're scoring seven, what does that tell you? You know, if you're scoring an eight, a nine, a 10, fantastic. So if a 10 is wild horses are not going to stop me taking this action and seven is, well, I'll try, reflect on what that tells you. And maybe the action point isn't right or maybe the time and the date isn't achievable for you. So have a go at that. It's a fantastic tool, goal setting tool. You've now got your goal setting wheel, you've set your action points and you've committed to taking action. It works for me, it works for my clients, and I'm sure uh, you do something similar, Audrey, I guess. Yes, and that's what I'm gonna um, add to, because I've got a list of the big goal, the steps you can take, and adding your elements, which really break things down. We've got this big goal, this priority segment that Sharon's been talking about, and then you get the steps that you can do. And in Sharon's case, she suggested three things you can do, and that's manageable, so that's excellent. And then you choose the one thing. Now, Sharon also talks about the importance of that time, remembering how to or when to do it, the barriers that you might face and the impact. And that bit is one of the most important bits of all in this exercise. Why? Because often, even if you feel really motivated and you're really up for doing it, when it comes to reflecting and life has got in the way, what actually happens is when you ask the question, of what did you actually do? And think about it, ask it yourself. You might have already got that goal. You might be thinking, I'm gonna do it. Yesterday, what did you do to take one of those steps towards your goal? Did you come near doing that one thing? The reality is time sometimes just runs away from us and we don't realize it. So always remember what Sharon says, write down when you're going to do it, how you're going to remember to do it, the barriers you might face, and the impact that's going to have, and that will keep you going. And that's also what Kirsty's Homeschool is gonna be looking at with praises and rewards for children. Over to you, Kirsty. Hello, Audrey. Well, 
we've been looking at praising and rewards this week. So what we do in our house is as soon as homeschool started, um, the children, both Rosie and Edward, came up to me and they wanted in place the same reward chart that they have in school. Um, so what we do is we have a big rainbow with a pot of gold at the top. And then coming from that is a sun. Now the sun is where they start at the beginning of every day. Below the sun, I have put three different clouds. Now these are three chances of making choices. So the clouds, in a sense, you could say are negative. Um, so if they do something, if say for instance, um, there's negative behavior, they would go from the sun onto the first cloud. Now, once they're on the cloud, it doesn't mean that they cannot then go back up. If they then go and apologize, correct that behavior, they then move back up onto the sun. If they then do something that is really positive, then they can go up onto the rainbow. If it do something even better, if they really, really improve and do something astounding, this could be in learning, behaviour, all sorts, then they then have the opportunity to go up yet again. And this is onto the pot of gold. Once they get on the pot of gold, there is a treat on them. Sometimes there might be a chocolate coin. Sometimes there might actually be like a coin on there. 20p. <laughs> 20p is exciting um, you know it doesn't have to be anything extravagant but this at home is how we manage our behavior in Rosie and Edward it's something that they have at school so we thought right okay if this system works well at school they understand it clearly then why not make one at home and this is working really well other than going all out and making big charts and things there are so many other simple ways of praising showing praise and rewards to children um, simple sticker charts from potty training I had it was great it was great fun sticker charts that I'd carry in my nappy bag and whenever they went to the toilet when we were out a sticker was put on there and then good job and they loved that it's there are so so many different ways of doing it it doesn't have to be extravagant it doesn't have to cost you a lot of money you can do it with things that are simply lying around your house and this is the wonderful thing it can be done in any way um, if you want to do it over, if there's like behaviour that needs changing over a certain length of time, reward, 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 simple stickers. And then at the end of that week, bake, do something that they like. And that then initiates, OK, so I've done this good behaviour over this length of time. I can now do something that I really enjoy. And, you know, doing this over a period of time should help any behaviours improve. Um, yeah, so we've got lots of different ways that we do our home. We've got our behaviour chart, we use stickers, anything, anything's great fun. And we hope that this has helped you and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great weekend guys, bye. Thank you so much, Kirsty. And the great thing about stickers, exactly as Kirsty says, they are immediate rewards. So do stickers work for adults? Uh, they might do. Think about what motivates you and that brings me on to passing back to Sharon for the cool down. Oh, thanks so much. It's so lovely to see the sticker charts and the children being motivated by those things. I can remember when mine were little, actually, stickers were amazing. I always had a, a pack of stickers in my bag, Audrey, just in case. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's the best thing. I feel like bringing some for myself, you know, just popping in my handbag. Oh, yeah, yeah. That inner child. We love a sticker, don't we? Totally. <laughs> So everyone is motivated by different things, aren't they? But here are my top three tips for staying motivated and achieving your goal. So tip number one is having a clear vision. We've been talking about that through the whole of today's show. Picturing your goal. If you want success, you must create a clear vision. Creating a vision board can really help. And all that is, is a pictorial representation of your outcome, what you want to achieve. It's fantastic. It could be really, really motivating. Some of my clients have absolutely loved it. Or you can use the, the wheel of success. That's another visual representation of your goal. But rather than it being in pictures, it's a word format. So both of those are lovely sort of um, uh, visual representations of what you want to, uh, to achieve because it's really important you must see something regularly uh, to to motivate yourself you must it must be something that you can relate to and if it's if it's not something you're excited by if it doesn't speak to your heart 
then you probably won't be motivated to stay on course. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to understand your reason why. Now I call this the big fat why question and it is so important to associate yourself with the reason why. Now, if I said to you, um, I need you to uh, to drive to um, Heathrow Airport um, on the 27th of August um, at 4 a.m. What's the first question you're going to ask? You're going to say why, aren't you? But if I said to you, I need you to drive on the 27th of, of August to Heathrow Airport because there's an all expensive paid uh, trip to Barbados, you wouldn't need to know the reason why. You wouldn't need to know the reason why you wanted to set your alarm. You would just be going there, wouldn't you? Because, you know, you know the why. So knowing the why is a really important thing. If you know the reason why, you're much more likely to stay on course, take action and be motivated. It's one of the biggest reasons why people feel fail on their goals so they don't associate themselves with the reason why they want to achieve that thing and the third tip is all about producing a plan your action steps break your plan into manageable steps the things that you need to get done the tasks if you like in the in the action planning part of today's show it, we were breaking that down to you for you, really showing you how that was going to work. And once you have got your action uh, plan, you must put some dates and times next to it. That's really, really important. Otherwise, again, it becomes too much of a wish um, and not a goal. Now, the other little tip that sort of goes along with producing a plan is once you've got your action points and you have, you've set down the times and the dates that you're going to do it, share it with somebody. Because if you share it with somebody, again, that holds you accountable once you set it out loud and you shared it well you're much more likely to achieve it as a result so remember the only person in control of the, your motivation is you so take action find it and make it work for you good luck with that we'd love to hear how you get on and i think that's all we have time for this week isn't it audrey it is Sharon and this is a reminder on the board of the three tips Sharon's given you so do use those they are fantastic tips and they do work but yes you're right we are at the end of the show and so before Sharon and I leave you it's time to hand over to Mandy Marriott uh, Reverend Mandy Marriott in fact of the Dustin Parish who will be telling us about why it's okay to fail as long as you pick up and keep going so from Sharon and I have a great week bye bye, bye. Bye. Hello again. Well, I'm sure you know the saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Well, never more was that true than for the inventor, Thomas Edison. Biographers have written that Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, made over 900 light bulbs that didn't work before he finally made one that did. 900 times he went to all the trouble of making a light bulb, plugging it in, flicking the switch and watching while nothing happened. People must have thought he was nuts but he kept on trying and trying again. According to Edison, every time he made a light bulb that didn't work, he merely found one more way not to make a light bulb. Eventually, by a process of elimination, he made a light bulb that produced light. And now he's known as one of the greatest inventors of all time, just because he was determined to keep going. Now, you and I may not be trying to be the greatest inventor, but maybe we are trying to be the best person we can be sometimes in the most trying of circumstances. But let's face it, we all stuff up at one time or another. 
And I want to tell you about someone who stuffed up big time. And that was a man called Peter. He was a friend of Jesus, a very close friend, in fact. He travelled with Jesus for three years during Jesus' public ministry. He shared meals with Jesus day by day. Jesus even stayed at Peter's mother-in-law's house. Peter would have seen Jesus perform many miracles. Jesus even called Peter the rock, the dependable one, the one who would be a great leader in the early church. But do you know what? The night Jesus was arrested, Peter followed at a distance, but was recognised by a servant girl. And when she confronted Peter with the fact that he too was a follower of Jesus, Peter denied it, not once, not twice, but three times. Peter said he didn't even know Jesus. Whoa! Now, if that's not stuffing up big time, I don't know what is. But you know, after Jesus was raised from the dead and met with Peter again on the shore of Lake Galilee, he didn't say as you and I might have done, why did you deny me that night? No. Instead, Jesus just asked his friend, Do you love me? And he asked that question three times, matching the three denials of Peter. You can imagine Peter must have felt so unworthy, so guilty. And yet Jesus gives him a new task and commissions him to build his church. And he did. If it wasn't for Peter and the other disciples, there would be no church today. So understand that we all fail. But that doesn't need to be the end of the story. God believes in you. The question is, do you believe in yourself?